I'm ready to go. Those are the exact words of a defiant Fonnie Willis. She is, of course, the Georgia DA overseeing Trump's election interference case. And she took the stand for hours today in a high stakes hearing, which just ended. A hearing that focused on her relationship with Nathan Wade, who is her top prosecutor in the Trump case. And it was a show. Trump and his allies' lawyers pried into salacious, deeply personal details in Willis's private life, and Willis did not back down, turning the tables on them. I'm right, Bill. It's, it's like a, a woman doesn't have the right to keep her private life private. And I'm speaking on this because there have been all these in, intimations. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. You think I'm on trial. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. That is, though, exactly what Trump's legal team wanted, which was to put Willis on trial, hoping that if they can get her disqualified, that will sink her case, which is into election interference to try to overturn an election. Now, to be clear, the allegations against Willis are serious. If a person hires somebody they're dating to help them financially using taxpayer money, that is serious, extremely serious. It would be disqualified. But Team Trump did not provide any evidence that Willis did any of that. And of course, we do know that Willis only hired Nathan Wade after several others refused the job. But that did not matter when it came to the humiliating questions posed to Willis today. She asked when the romantic relationship ended. That's the question. It sometime in, um, I'd say late summer of 2023. So I don't believe me and um, so this is what you're really asking about. This is the salaciousness of all of this, right? No, I'm just uh, asking about your romantic relationship. When you stopped I, dating, I, asking. I, I think that me and Mr. Wade, so he's a man. He probably would say June or July. I would say we had a tough conversation in August. Yeah, Mr. Wade about. visits you at the place you laid your head. When? Has he ever visited you at the place you laid your head? So let's be clear, because you lied in this, this. Let me tell you which one you lied in. Right here? I think you lied right here. No, 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 no. This is the truth. Judge, and this it, is, it, it is a lie. It We're is gonna, a lie. Right, Ms. Willis. You see. Mr. Sena, thank you. We're going to take five minutes. Trump's team is obviously trying to make the argument that Willis financially benefited from the investigation into Trump and should be removed. But Willis, again, testifying under oath, said that she did not need Wade's money while discussing the relationship. Did the forthcoming indictment have anything to do with that? Ooh. Or was it just a coincidence? <clears throat> Mr. Let's go on and have the conversation. I just ask you whether or not it was a coincidence. It had absolutely nothing to do with this. It's interesting that we're here about this money. Mr. Wade is used to women that, uh, as he told me one time, the only thing a woman can do for him is make him a sandwich. We would have brutal arguments about the fact that I am your equal. I don't need anything from a man. A man is not a plan. A man is a companion. And so there was tension always in our relationship, which is why I was give him his money back. I don't need anybody to foot my bills. The only man who's ever foot my bills completely is my daddy. Is there anything else you would like to add to that? No. Sure. But I'm sure we'll talk about it further. Well, see what I said? To be clear, what Trump's team wants to discuss has nothing to do with the actual facts of the case here, right? The facts of the actual case, the heart of all of this, is whether Trump and his allies, uh, it's about election interference. They repeatedly tried to overturn this election in Georgia in 2020. Nick Valencia is out front. He is live in Atlanta to begin our coverage. Nick, I think just from what we played there, anybody who didn't have a chance to watch throughout the day understands this was an incredible moment. And it is not like something anybody in this country gets to see in a courtroom on a regular basis. A stunning day. Uh, Fonnie Willis takes the stand uh, and, and all of this happens. You've got some new reporting. What are you learning now? Well, Aaron, it was stunning to see the DA on the stand today. And I just spoke to Bishop Reginald Jackson, who spent the morning with Fonnie Willis before court. He prayed with her and he said he wanted to offer her words of encouragement. And to him, he said, Fonnie woke up ready this morning to testify and eager to meet this head on. But still, it was just so surreal to see the DA up there taking questions from defense attorneys. Fonnie Willis went out of her way to say that she wasn't the one on trial, but there were certainly moments during today's hearing where it sure felt like it. 
not been very anxious to have this conversation with you today. So I ran to the courtroom. A defiant Fulton County DA, Fonnie Willis, taking the stand today after weeks of fighting allegations that she personally benefited from a romantic relationship she had with Nathan Wade, the special prosecutor she handpicked to spearhead the sprawling racketeering charges against Donald Trump and his allies. I probably had some choice words about some of the things that you said that were dishonest within this motion. So I don't know that it was a conversation. As you know, Mr. Wade is a Southern gentleman. Me, not so much. Willis not hiding her anger over the allegations, at one point being called a hostile witness by the defense. I very much want to be here, so I'm not a hostile witness. While both Wade and Willis have admitted to the relationship they had, they say it began only after Wade took the job. That timeline, also a major point of contention in the hearing today. Before Willis took the stand, the first witness of the day directly contradicted Wade and Willis's previous statements to the court. You have no doubt that their romantic relationship was in effect from 2019 until the last time you spoke with her. No doubt. That's three years earlier than when Wade said in an affidavit the relationship started. But Wade holding firm to that date when he took the stand. 2022 was the start of any intimate sexual relationship with the district attorney. As did Willis. When did you start dating? When I started dating Mr. Wade? Mm -hmm. It was right around then. Um, April 2020? Yeah. 22. Yes, 2022. it was a, around then. I don't know, like... You know, it's not like when you're in grade school and you send a little letter and it says, will you be my girlfriend and you check it. And then there's the money trail. Defense attorneys pressing on whether or not Wade paid for Willis when the two vacationed together, trying to suggest that he used money he made from his taxpayer funded contract at the DA's office on Willis. Both maintain that they split their vacation expenses. So all of the vacations that she took, she paid you cash for? Yes, ma'am confirming the same in her testimony. Because we went out multiple times, that probably went to the level of more than $100. But if, if we're doing tit for tat like that, I probably paid for as many meals as he paid for. And so I did not receive any gifts from him. And at times, forcefully pushing back with the defense attorney who first launched the allegations. These people are on trial for trying to steal an election in 2020. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. Today's hearing got deep into the personal lives of both Willis and Wade, with at one point the district attorney throwing Nathan Wade under the bus for allegedly making sexist remarks. Willis's testimony is expected to continue tomorrow in the 9 a.m. hour, but Aaron, we are not expected to get a ruling anytime soon. It could be days. Judge Scott McAfee, who's presiding over this case, is not expected to make a ruling from the bench. Aaron. All right. Thank you very much, Nick. And uh, on this incredible day here, Daryl Cohen is with me, a former Fulton County prosecutor. He knows both Bonnie Willis and Nathan Wade. Also with us, Karen Freeman, Dick Niffalo, Ryan Goodman, and Laura Coates, who is outside the Fulton County Courthouse. So, Daryl, let me start with you because you know both of them and you know Bonnie Willis well. Did you expect her to get on that witness stand and do what she did to be so defiant, to push back time and time again? She didn't let anything go. Aaron, this case never ceases to amaze me. It's a case of first impression that us lawyers like to say, but the reality is it's never happened before. And I watched Fonnie walk into that courtroom, and she was walking in hot, and she pushed back. I'm not at all surprised. I felt like we were watching a heavyweight fight where Ashley Merchant was swinging hard and Fonnie was swinging back just as hard. But the bottom line is, does it matter? Does this take anything away from the facts of the case? My answer is it does not. It's a sideshow that has legs for the moment. Well, and it's important, I think, that, that you know, when you say that, a, a sideshow that has legs for the moment. And Karen, from start to finish, Willis uh, called out. She clashed with the defense attorneys. Let me just play some more examples, including some of the ones that we just briefly saw there. It's ridiculous to me that the... You lied on Monday, and yet here we still are. The lie, that's one of your lies. You've been intrusive into people's personal lives. You're confused. I'm not on trial, no matter how hard you try to put me on trial. No, 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 no. This is the truth, Judge. And this it, is, it, it is a lie. Is. It We're is gonna, a lie. Right. We're going to answer it since you said it. Don't be cute with me and then think that you're not going to get an answer. Is her anger justified? 
I think so. I think what was lost today was the legal standard that the defendants have to meet in order to get the case disqual get her disqualified from the case, which is is there an actual or perceived conflict of interest, one that would has has to do with money and, and a relationship, but but we didn't hear any of that. For example, we didn't hear anything about who approved of the vouchers that Wade submitted and his timesheets and all of the things that you would ask if you're really trying to discuss the financial relationship. And this just devolved into a salacious, uh, private, deeply personal uh, attacks on, on Fonnie Willis that just really <laughs> seemed irrelevant uh, to such an extent.